year. I know it took a few weeks uh, of coordinating and all kinds of other you know emails back and forth and things, but we did it. We're doing Google Hangouts, and uh, it's going to be great. So, yes, I I wanted to uh, bring everybody together because the Goku vs Superman death battle is uh, the largest event in death battle history, and possibly one of the largest events in internet history. And it's already received over a million views on ScrewTech.com, you know, over ten thousand comments, and then on YouTube it's getting close to a million. There's over sixty thousand comments. So every day it's just going to get bigger. And you know, I I knew it would be big, but um, you know, because it's Goku vs Superman. But uh, I didn't know how much work was going to be involved from all the different people from across the world. So I think there are a lot of great stories there that haven't been told yet, and uh, that's what we're here for, just to, to share that with one another and to share with everybody uh, out there uh, across the internet. You know, it's got. Uh, Professional voice actors, orchestrated music, 3D animation, and then expert consultants from both the Dragon Ball side and the Superman side. Uh, you know, and then Ben and Chad just poured their heart and souls into it. I uh, got people really excited for the battle, and um, you know that, that's awesome. Uh, now it's time to to talk about what that was like for everybody and and uh, their thoughts about the actual fight. Uh, talk about why we all know Goku should have won. And I uh, see how the fans reacted and things like that. So uh, I've got a loose schedule. I just want to talk about basically, you know, the beginnings of the death battle and the research that was involved, getting to know one another, the writing process. Uh, you know, like if you did storyboards, you know, the production side of things, and then uh, actually animating the fight, voice acting it, how the fans reacted, and then you know, let's get nerdy, analyze the fight. Uh, argue with each other and then have some some concluding thoughts. Um, and so before we begin the the actual discussion, I want people to just introduce each other really quick, thirty seconds or less, and um, so we can get all familiar with one another's voices. Uh, let's start with Ben. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Ben. I uh, I'm the guy who basically runs the show. I suppose uh, I play Wiz. Um, alongside Chad, who plays Boomstick, who unfortunately couldn't make it to the Hangout today. Um, and then I write the show, I direct the show, and I got this whole team together and somehow <laughs> made this giant collaboration work, I suppose, in the best way we could. Um, and the goal was to finally answer the biggest, nerdiest question of all time, essentially. Uh, and I think we did a pretty good job. So, and that definitely goes to uh, definitely uh, is a it de definitely uh, goes to everybody who worked on it. Everybody, all these people uh, did an excellent job. So, uh, thank you guys very much. I just want to get that out of the way right right first off. Thank you guys very much for all the hard work you did to help make this death battle amazing. Um, I guess I should move on to somebody else now. <laughs> Uh, sure. How about we go to uh, Jordan? Ah. Can you please introduce yourself and what you did? Yeah. All right. I'm the great swing. I did all of the animation that you've seen for nine minutes, starting at 16 minutes and 55 seconds into the video. All right. Great. And uh, let's go to Lawrence. Hi there guys, I'm Lauren Simpson, aka Master Collects, I'm part of Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and I was the vocal talent for Goku. And not gonna lie really, the fact that I was picked to be Goku for this tumultuous um, internet event was a massive honor and you know I have to extend my yeah, you know, my thanks to Screw Attack for approaching me and Team Four Star to be part of this and you know, it was just a lot of lot of fun. So that's my two pennant. We could not have gone to anybody else. <laughs> we absolutely could not have gone to anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for helping out. Always amazing. a pleasure. Okay, let's go to Mike. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, my name is Michael Agruso. I, I'm also known as It's Just Some Random Guy uh, from a channel on YouTube, uh, mostly for the Hi, I'm a Marvel and I'm a DC uh, back PC parodies. And uh, I provide the voice of Superman in Goku versus Superman. 
Uh, Lawrence, Moscow X, uh, I was deeply humbled to be asked to uh, provide the voice for Superman in this, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in this video uh, to kind of represent in that way. Uh, and I, uh, I want to, uh, uh, while you're here, definitely as well, thank you Ben and Chad and Jordan for allowing me this incredible opportunity. Well, Great. I have to say the same thing I uh, said to Lawrence. Like, we couldn't have uh, done it with anybody else, I don't think. He did an excellent job and the perfect Superman by far. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, let's go to Steve. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Steve Yunus. I run supermanhomepage.com. Uh, number one Superman fan site in the world. Uh, when the guys approached me about... Uh, Coming to the uh, to the party with some Superman information, I was only too happy to help. Um, I know Goku like I know Tofu, which is pretty much <laughs> nothing. Um, so it was uh, it was interesting for me to watch the fight. Um, obviously, I was very pleased with the result, uh, but the the mathematics and all the science just went whew, over my head. So well done, guys! Top job. Thanks, man, and thanks for helping out again. Like smartest Superman guy in the world, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Okay, and uh, Kimlin? Hi, everybody. Um, I am Kimlin Tran. I provide the voice of Chi Chi in both um, the Death Battle and, um, and in Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z Abridged, starting from Season 2 and beyond. And, um, Great. Yes, very short and simple because everyone already said all the thank yous. And, um,. <laughs> I would just be saying more of the same. Hmm. Uh, and I am Derek Padula. I'm the author of the Dao of Dragon Ball website and upcoming book. Um, I'm the Dragon Ball expert, along with Mike Labrie and the Kanzenshi staff that helped out with the death battle. Uh, it was an honor to be, uh, you know, offered an invitation to be a consultant, and it was a lot of work to to answer all the questions because I wanted to make sure they were super you know, thoroughly answered, but I'm so happy with the results. Even if uh, my guy didn't win, I think the battle was amazing, and it was, uh, like I said, it was an honor to be a part of it. And uh, I'm glad to have everybody here to to be taking part in this as well. Hmm. So thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. It's great to, it's great to see at least most of the team all in one place. So this mm -hmm. is awesome. So, all right, let's start. Um, I want to direct this one at Ben. I want to know, where did the idea for a Goku vs. Superman death battle come from? Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, Goku vs. Superman is easily the most requested death battle since the beginning. Um, to be honest, the whole reason death battle started in the first place was because of, Goku vs., of the Goku vs. Superman uh, debate. Basically, I was just watching an episode of Deadliest Warrior, um, which I, I really like the show. Um, and, and this was uh, at the time when I was finishing up my show that I had been working on for Screw Attack at the time, Metal Gear Ben. I was like, I need to, I need to come up with a new show once this is done. So uh, I knew I knew Craig really liked Deadliest Warrior. So basically, the idea was I gotta pitch a show that Craig would like, but I would like too. So I watched Deadliest Warrior, and it got me thinking about arguments I'd seen online since the beginning of the internet with Goku vs. Superman, um, and I, pretty quickly I figured, okay, we've got to just answer this once and for all. Let's do Death Battle. You know, let's do this show where we pit two f random fictional characters from who knows where against each other and try to somehow compare them. Um, and, and so Goku vs. Superman has been planned since the beginning. Uh, I've been working on it kind of on the side while working on the previous 24 episodes of, of Death Battle, which means I've been working on Goku vs. Superman for like two and a half years. Wow. <laughs> which is wow. kind of insane when I think about it. Um, but it's been, it's been all on my computer, bouncing around this laptop. Um, it's been a, a long, long project, but I think it turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm really proud of how it turned out and how everybody did on it. Right. Now, it's just the, the, the two of you that are involved, Chad and James. Now, how did you, you said you started it two years ago, you know, from the very beginning, but um, 
at some point you decided, okay, let's focus on this one and let's get it done. Um, where do you even begin with this? Or how, how do you? It's that there's both such monumental characters with such long uh, background. You know, how do you start researching this? Just watch the shows, basically. Uh, just, I mean, you can't exactly just watch a show for Superman. Um, but for Goku, it was just the basic plan was watch through Dragon Ball to the end of Dragon Ball GT, watch all the movies, and then once that's all done, and I've got all my notes on every single episode and determined what I can from the episodes themselves, English dubs, uh, uh, Funimation, Funimation and Ocean dubs, um, then go to the experts, because I don't know how to speak Japanese. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. i got to find people who I can trust to, uh, you know, fill me, on, fill me in on what Goku's like in the Japanese dubs, the original, the real thing, uh, and then find out all the uh, Daizenshu stuff, things like that. And so start from the basic storyline, and then once everything is built from there, find all the branches, you know. Um, but for both characters, the, uh, obviously there was uh, thousands of debates online that I also... I made sure to check out because there were there were a lot of different you know Dragon Ball and Superman fans with all sorts of different theories about how to determine who would win, who would not win, or, or how they would win. And of course, ninety nine point nine percent of them are just over exaggeration and crazy stuff. But you know that's kind of the point in a way uh, of the debates is just have fun debating about these fictional characters. But at the same time, it's always difficult to determine what is real and what is just made up. So there's a lot of work that goes into it, clearly. But um, that's at the some basic point, you gist of it. decided you needed to, you needed to look out for outside help, you know, to uh, reach out yeah. to these experts. So how did you go yeah. out finding people that you know you wanted to ask for help? Well, we'd never done it before. Like this is the first death battle that we um, specifically. Yeah. Uh, question like uh, mm -hmm. you, you guys, and, and and other you know expert database or analysts about about the characters, because um, typically we wanted to keep it you know just in house to keep things non biased. You know, um, uh, we figured it would be more legit if we didn't start bringing in random people. Um, but there's just so much. There's just so much. There's no way. Uh, the reason why so many debates online for, for Goku versus Superman who, who do get serious about it, the reason why none of them are right is because one person can't figure it out. It's just impossible. No, like, no. there's just too much. So we had to go uh, to you, Derek, to Steve, uh, to Kazenshu, and, and to uh, Superman Super Sight. We ha we, there was no other way um, to legitimately answer it without help. Right. Um, now I want to get to know the Superman people. Um, Steve, can you tell me a little bit about your background and um, what makes you a Superman expert? Well, uh, it's a funny story actually. Uh, I've always been a Superman fan since well, watching the Super Friends cartoons as a kid on Saturday morning on TV but, um, and seeing Christopher Reeve in the first movie when I was about eight years old in the cinema. Uh, showing my age there, uh, but um, it, it it wasn't really till you know, I mean you, you go to school, you go to high school, you you know you forget about your comic book kind of your you know your childhood um, interests, and then I don't know you get a renaissance of you know going back to those kinds of things again. And um, when the internet kind of came about, I decided to look online for you know things that I was interested. Found a, a website or web page back then called the Superman Home Page. Um, and that's basically what it was, a grey screen, no graphics uh, web page about Superman that uh, seemed to have quite a bit of information on it. And I contacted the, the guy as a graphic designer myself, see if he wanted any help with uh, some of the graphics for uh, the web page. And um, after two years, I found out that unfortunately he was sick. Uh, he was uh, suffering from a rare genetic skin disease that predisposed him to cancer. And... Uh, ended up uh, passing away not long after in 96 um, and uh, he offered to ask me if I would take over the site, I offered to help him out take over the site and since 96 I've been running uh, the Superman homepage, it's become an absolute enormous uh, website, um, it, you know, it went from like having 
three people a day watching it to uh, looking at it to now you know over twelve thousand people each day uh, coming to the site, and it's become almost like a full time job for me. And uh, since ninety four ninety six when I took over, it's just been uh, Superman, Superman, Superman. Wow! <laughs> so you definitely are the man uh, to to contact. Absolutely. Um, now I wanted to learn also a little bit more about. Um, Lawrence and uh, Michael and, and Kim Lin and how they got uh, in contact with Ben and were asked to, to voice act these characters. So anybody anybody can speak to them. Uh, well, I can definitely, I can, well, yes, okay. Well, um, it, it all began with uh, me because um, Team Four Star had been contacted uh, by Ben and Chad, you know, screw attack people, because earlier, earlier, there was a previous death battle where Takahata 101 and, and Lani Pator were voicing Vegeta and Shadow in a previous death battle. And there was just talk about the fact, you know, the mooting over that, oh, you know, eventually with the purpose of getting Mask OX to do Goku, to do the voice of Goku. So, in a way, I wasn't too sure whether it was going to happen, but I thought, yeah, that would be a really good thing to do one of these days. And then eventually the call came out and said, you know, we're going to do it. So it was just a case of, wow. So, um, and I was just completely psyched because any chance to do the voice of Goku is so I'm I'm there. It's just because after having spent n nearly five years voicing Goku in various forms, be it bridging movies on our own back and like Team Four Star, and now with the Death Battle and various other projects I've been in, I just feel like a real strong sense of with Goku and. Really, it's just the personality seems to have just like absorbed into my own psyche. Because whenever really I just kind of get feel a bit feeling of petulance, I just kind of end up just talking like Goku for no reason at all. And it's just I think Mike Labrie from Kanzenshu uh, summed it up right that he actually thought that my Goku was quite different. It was like the best of all the different types of interpretations of Goku. Like a bit of the Japanese, yeah. bit of the English, bit of the Canadian. It's it's like a meld, and it's just ever since it's just that strong connection. And to be able to like do the death battle as Goku was just mo a monumental honor. And to be able to just you know go through all the forms and yeah, so it's just a case of just keeping in contact with Ben and just just being informed and just keep abreast and just do my best. Mm. Yeah, the Vegeta Shadow Death Battle, that was like a year ago or something. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. we talked to him about it even then. <laughs> wow. Uh, and Mike, are you still there? I'm still here. Sorry, okay, the camera great. dropped out. Uh, yeah, we lost right? your camera, but we can hear you. Uh, can you speak to that same question? How you got in touch with Ben and started doing this death battle? Um, yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, I... I uh, received uh, an email from Ben uh, explaining uh, the death battle, uh, basically how it works, and uh, asking me to be uh, be a part of it, providing the voice of Superman. And uh, initially, I was a bit, uh, I, I was like, oh, well, that's sure, yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, yeah. So I, uh, I immediately said yes. And uh, then I said, okay, now I just got to, I guess I, I must be one of the few people on Earth that wasn't aware of Death Battle before, so I had to uh, go on. So I went online and I, I started looking into it, and I and I said, "Oh wow, this is this is big. This is a big deal here." And uh, and I, I really I really enjoyed the concept and everything. I just really got into it, and uh, just to get a feel of what exactly I'd be doing uh, in, in in providing this voice, and uh, I saw you know a lot of you know the the video game icon uh, in interpretations, but after reading the script that was sent to me, I could see that this was going to be a, a lot, uh, a lot bigger, a lot much bigger in scope. And uh, yeah. I was like, okay, so clearly this is this is going to be a big deal. So um, I was I, I was really excited and uh, just yeah, raring to go. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I'm a huge Superman fan from way back. I'm a huge superhero fan from way back of both Marvel and DC. With uh, I mean, I've been making the, the videos about uh, the rivalry um, for a long time, partly because of my familiarity and just my uh, 
yeah, my passion for the the characters and having grown up with them. And uh, uh, when I started providing some of the voices, I was doing it with a, a much more comedic uh, not bent, not uh, in, uh, at, to the, at the start. So I was, you know, in the beginning, Superman. He was a bit down here, and it was a bit. He uh, was a bit in the chest, and it was a very. Uh, uh, yes, hello, I'm Superman. It was kind of played for laughs in a in, in a way, but but I deep. But I dearly loved Superman. I wasn't. I, I I wasn't trying to make fun of him so much as just kind of find a humorous uh, link. Uh, since then, and uh, certainly for this, I tried to take some of that and just kind of modulate it a little bit. To make it a little bit more grounded in, uh, uh, a, and some, find a happy medium so that it still had some of that chest resonance, but it wasn't as overstated. It was cartoonish. It was a bit, um, you're outmatched. Give up. It, it could be taken seriously, and uh, that was because that was important to me that that he be taken seriously. Certainly in this and uh, and in the videos that I've done since those uh, early few and. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I just, uh, and I had a great time doing it and making the, uh, and I, I even made some promos for it on my own channel, which were uh, uh, a lot of fun to do. And, um, yeah, I saw those. Those are awesome. Thanks for oh, doing thank that. You. <laughs> oh, hey, it was my pleasure. My pleasure. Happy to, happy to build the hype. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, and it, it just I gotta say, once once I saw that finished product, man, I was just I was just blown away to oh yeah this, yeah this version of Superman and hear my voice coming out of it was this animated fully rendered version of Superman was just that there's no that's indescribable feeling to to see that I gotta say. Hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, Jordan says it has that effect on people. Uh, yeah. The, so, uh, Kim Lynn, can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the death battle? Um, quite simply, I was contacted via my Facebook page, and I already knew about death battle because um, my friend Erica Mendez, she voiced um, Rainbow Dash in the Rainbow Dash vs. Starscream episode. Oh, and that was, my, that was my gateway, my gateway drug into a whole bunch of death battle episodes. And I really, really liked the show because... Um, it's, um, I sent a lot of crossovers in general, like Smash Brothers, Marvel vs. Capcom, but lots of games like that, games, shows, etc. They're really good for me because I get to learn more about, um, shows, games, etc. that I haven't had the opportunity to check out. So, growing up a bit more on the anime side, I didn't watch too much DBZ, but a little bit. And I really liked being a part of the the Superman versus Goku death battle because, good, I can finally catch up on the childhood I never had. <laughs> and um, for, I was surprised that Chi-Chi got to be a part of it at all because I, I was all like, man, I really like this death battle show. I wonder if I'll ever voice anything that will actually end up on there. And lo and behold, Chi-Chi, and I got to be flung into space. <laughs> well, no, yeah, and actually, it just feels like really good in terms of the continuity, bringing you know, bringing him in, in from the Team Four Star, you know, Chi Chi, and then having in, and then of course having Lanny Pator as Vegeta in there. It had that kind of bit of continuity in there too. So just to have that consistency really added to the experience as well. Yeah, we figured we had to start it off like it's Goku versus Superman. You can't. We, we couldn't do it the same way as we had every other death battle where just Goku and Superman just meet up and for some reason they want to just fight, whatever. You know, that works, but this is Goku versus Superman. This yeah, is yeah. something bigger here. So <laughs> we figured having an, uh, kind of an homage to Team Four Stars abridged style, uh, uh, have the abridged style intro with the Superman saving the plane um, and singing his own theme song <laughs> to... <laughs> Um, the Team Four Star cameos, which uh, it was it was great having them all uh, 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 make their little appearance in Chi Chi's part. Um, there was actually originally an idea. Uh, we actually had her her voice it that Chi Chi would come back down, um, <laughs> and just like Goku would fly off in the Nimbus, and then there'd be a long pause, and then you'd hear ah, psh, ow, kind of in the distance, and then it would move on. 
Um, uh, ended up cutting it out because it kind of took away from Goku going off. But uh, um, and, and actually, there has been some consideration of a Chi Chi versus Lois Lane death battle. I saw some of those. Huh. If you do that, you do that we might uh, talk to you again. <laughs> Excellent. I don't know, not, nothing to guarantee or confirm. <laughs> uh, just I think it would be really funny. Uh, Definitely be like cheering for, the, cheering for the side lane. Woo, go, dear! I can't wait to warm <laughs> mouth present! <laughs> oh, oh, comes down with the halo or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Ben, can you tell us more about the writing process? You know, how do you get started writing something this, this uh, massive and but still keep it you know, short enough to give you know grab people's attention and get right into it without being you know, <coughs> trite and all that stuff. Um, and did you feel any pressure to make sure it was accurate to the characters uh, and try to like appease the fans? Um. Well, uh, I'll, I'll go into the accurate thing first. Uh, uh, we do definitely want to stick to the accuracy of the characters. Like this is supposed to be Goku versus Superman as the Goku from. Dragon Ball and Superman from DC Comics. It's not supposed to be Team Four Stars, Goku versus whatever Superman. But we we kind of have to, you know, bend that a little bit when we bring in these, you know, well-known internet voice actors. Like we we we, we got to throw in the Kyle what joke somewhere, you know? You got to have that. Uh, uh, and and Death Battle is like it seriously analyzes the characters and develops a an actual decision but it is meant to be more it is meant to be fun so we got to keep it fun and, and that's why at the beginning like that abridged scene that I was talking about <laughs> you've got Superman singing his own theme song and Goku's kind of all over the place you know um, I heard he's an alien what it's only a matter of time before he destroys the planet you know those kind of things um, and it still works with the character, but it is taking it a little more of a comedic side, you know, just just for kicks, you know. Um, so while we do want to be accurate with the characters, and, and you know, we show that with Goku's reaction to the Kryptonite, for example, um, we also want to make sure it's fun. Uh, as far as writing it goes, this one more than anything, uh, Goku vs Superman more than any other episode, has been really tough because we. Typically, a death battle episode is about eight to ten minutes, sort of, and, and we're able to condense the information uh, while still having boomsticks, one-liners, and, and getting in some quicks and, make, and making it fun. Um, but this one, we wanted to make sure, like, especially with Goku, and well, I mean, and even with Superman, but especially with Goku, since there's so many people who have so many different ideas of what Goku could do, we had to, we had to be specific about what he could do. And we had to get that across. Otherwise, people would, if, if we didn't mention that Goku's key output was this much or that he could run this fast, you know, people would start, people would question whether or not we had the right information. People are going to question whether or not we have the right information regardless. Yeah. Like, but we, we had to do as much as we could while still keeping it brief enough to be entertaining. Like, mm. the original script, the original script was over... 20 pages long for just the rundowns, and typically a script is about a minute per page, um, at least the way we write it. Um, and, and so it, the, the rundown part of the episode ended up being about 15 minutes. Originally it was going to be, the original script, it was like 27 minutes, which is impossible. We could not have that. <laughs> Absolutely not. So it is tough cutting it all down and making sure everything is mentioned, or if it's not mentioned, something else is mentioned that kind of counters it or includes it in a way. Um, but I think we got everything. <laughs> I like to think we got everything. Yeah, I think so too. Now, I really love how the fight escalated and continued changing environments. It was very classic DBZ progression. You know, it goes from Metropolis. First it's Kamei Island, then Metropolis, and then, you know, the Dragon Ball Wastelands. And then you're in outer space, and then you even go into the center of the Earth. Hmm. So what was the writing and storyboarding process like in terms of, of keeping, you know, it ramping up? We knew, we knew we had to include key key elements from both Superman's stories and from Goku's stories. Like we knew originally we were going to have the fight at Kame House. 
Uh, like that's where it would start. And, you know, we we changed locations in the script a lot. Um, eventually, we decided you know we'll start at the Daily Planet and then the sun will go down, and that will be the excuse for Superman flying around the world so that he gets the sun. And that's the excuse of going literally from the western side of the Earth to the eastern side of the Earth. You know, to get both kind of cultures in there. Uh, right. Superman's and, and Dragon Balls. Um, and of course, we couldn't end this. There, there was no other possible way to end this without the planet blowing up. The planet had to blow up. Like, what else are you going to do with Goku versus Superman? Um, so that, that had to happen, really. And that's why we originally sch scheduled it for uh, uh, the Doomsday or whatever, uh, December 21st. <laughs> Uh, we figured it'd be perfect. Fortunately, that didn't really work out. But, um, but yeah, and, and of course, Superman and Goku both. Well, Superman fights in space all the time. Goku, not so much. But it's like whatever. It's Goku. He can do it. Whatever. <laughs> Why not? Well, technically, right. if you think about it, it's like it's already been countered because in apparently in the latest Dragon Ball movie, that it shows Goku yeah. actually sit, standing in the atmosphere, and of course, the Bardock special it shows that. In a way, Saiyans can sort of breathe in space, or at least in the upper atmosphere, and not have any ill effects. Vegeta so, and Bardock definitely had some mm. space stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the, this is Goku. He can survive planet-busting explosions. Yeah. Of course, he's going to be able to survive the vacuum of space. So, exactly. yeah, why not? Let's put him in space. It's cool. Mm. <laughs> right. Now, at what point did the voice actors get involved in... Um, how did the voice acting work? Did they, did they didn't go to the Screwtech office, did they? No, no. I mean, uh, Lawrence <laughs> is kind of on the other side of the world. So. Yeah, I'm kind of like in England, so that's a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit. Of, that would be a bit of an expensive plane ticket. But yeah, <laughs> no. Um, I can, I can pretty much just say because um usually um it's done by a script. So we, um, me and Mike, we were sent the sent the script, and obviously we were told effectively having to sign an NDA, you know, by you know, verbally by saying that we, you know, we do not talk about the result to anyone, right. not even our own mothers. Yeah. So it, cool. even if they got that, but um, hmm. it was essentially we just saw the script, you know, read through it. I obviously wanted to have a good like understanding of where the plot went, and it was a case of just doing what I usually do. Record multiple takes, uh, providing the best quality possible, and then just provide extra material. So, not just reading the lines, not just going line by line by line, but actually reading the character description and the description of the actions. Because with this, I wanted to make sure that it was um, it was the best I could possibly do and give them as much material as possible. And Ben did say that do pay attention to the footnotes because there are extra sound effects and foley which means like the punching and the kicking sounds which would be good for Jordan to work with and so just the more material possible and to save from repeating the same sound file so mm. it was just a case of now it's quite clear especially for Goku in particular there are lots of screams if you know Dragon Ball there are a lot and lots of screams so uh, you have to kind of prioritize what you record. So the stuff that's um, relatively light, so basically, you know, dialogue saying, you look pretty strong, let's fight! So just kind of like doing like that, you could just do that straight off the bat. And then some of the minor sounds, like kind of just doing that, <laughs> you know, that kind of, you know, you could do that no trouble. I could do that in my sleep, effectively. I've done that so long. But uh, the, the power-up stuff... You have to save till the till the last, and actually, I had to um, break it up into two segments. So having to do, yeah. having to like do it in one part and then do it in another part because my voice was dead. I'd done so much; I got mm. all the way from the start to Super Saiyan two, and then I had to stop, <laughs> take a couple of days break because I got felt I got a little bit sick, and then I just yeah. came back having to do it in two parts. I think there was about 150 or so lines in there, different takes and all that. So that's the process. That's similar to what happened to Sean Schemmel when he was doing the you know, Goku mm -hmm. Funimation. You know? Yeah, 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 because it's the story of how you know, he expelled more, more out of his 
out of his lungs and just yeah, he when he was doing Super Saiyan four and he literally just collapsed in the booth. He didn't he wasn't was in any pain or anything. Thankfully it was padded, but you know, that was kind of the same thing. But fortunately I was sitting down when I was recording, so no ill harm there. So Yeah, I was gonna mention right. that. There's been several stories of Dragon Ball actors passing out from from all the screaming, so Luckily, that didn't happen here. At least I don't think it happened with anybody uh, for Death Battle, and I really hope no. it doesn't. And it happens <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no I want to ask the, the, the script. Was there only one ending you knew exactly how it was going to go, or did you write two endings, one for Superman winning and one for Goku winning, and you weren't sure which one you were going to pick? You mean for when I sent it to to the actors or for me? Yeah, like did they, they knew who was going to win you know, like way before anybody else and they just couldn't say anything? Yes, mm. yes, yeah. they knew. Um, I didn't. <laughs> they were, well, I did not send, yeah, the, the, the cameo roles were just sent the abridged script because Chi-Chi and Vegeta didn't appear later on. But um, Mike and Lawrence did get the full script with the true ending. Uh, I, I trusted them not to tell anybody what was going to happen. Um, and they didn't because they're awesome people. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't want to. Like, the idea has been tossed around that whenever we get voice actors, we send them uh, a script with each ending, with, with a potential, you know, Goku ending or, or you know, for Vegeta's Shadow, an ending where Vegeta loses and Shadow wins, uh, just so they don't know which one it is, and it's just us that knows. Um, uh, Chad and myself. But I, I feel like if we do that, then there is a risk that they might, uh, that the actor might um, not make the proper ending the best they could be. I don't know. I like it. It really depends on the actor themselves. Like, like these guys, uh, Lawrence and Mike, they obviously know what they're doing. Uh, they're clearly professional, and they would probably be perfectly fine with doing both endings uh, at, at the best they could possibly be. But there is some there is some risk with sending them multiple different scripts, and plus I don't right. really think it's necessary in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Now I want to direct over to Jordan. Uh, tell us what was it like to animate the death battle, and um, this was the first one that was in full 3D. The other ones have been done in 2D. So you can tell us about that decision to make it 3D, and what was it like? for you, because you do this all by yourself, right? So what was it like to do such a large 3D project? Actually, Link vs. Cloud was the first one to be in full 3D, but I don't mm. count that one because I did, I did, I did a terrible job. Well, Link vs. Cloud okay. was, was kind of a draining for this yeah. one. I see. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, it was uh, the most intense accelerated animation project I've ever done. By a long shot. I put every waking second into that animation the entire time especially the second half of that right so what goes into the project um, what type of software do you use and you know how do you plan uh, it all out and actually create it yeah the choreography I like uh, the uh, because uh, I've, uh, okay well I used to use Flash for Sprite animations a long time ago and I still use it here and there for my own personal projects, but uh, in 2007 I uh, started learning 3D animation, and uh, that was with like Maya and 3D's Max, but I didn't care for those. I wanted to learn Blender because it's open source and it competes with the industry leading uh, 3D suit. So uh, in 2008 I transitioned to Blender, and uh, I slowly like uh, learned Blender over time, and uh, then in 2011, I started uh, figuring out how to do sprite animation in Blender, so that uh, I would have a, a lot more uh, power and flexibility over the animation. Mm. And uh, this uh, really paid off. Uh, I mean, compared to the Flash animations, there's still some uh, obvious sketchiness, because I'm newer to the 3D animation world than I am uh, 2D animation world, but... Uh, I'm uh, developing very quickly, and a lot of old stuff is still applying to all the new stuff. And, you know, if you know the fundamentals of animation, you can use any software. But I choose Blender because it is hands down the greatest open source software that exists. 
and it competes with the leading industry software like Freaky Max and Maya. Right. Okay. Well, great. So now, uh, you said you were like you were killing yourself on this thing, and I know Ben released the video, uh, you know, of him like asleep, right? He's like collapsed, and uh, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So originally it was supposed to be, uh, you know, in in time uh, for the the Mayan calendar, you know, December twenty first. Uh, that would be the end, either the end of humanity or the beginning of a new epoch, and it was like perfect timing for the Goku vs. Oh, Man thing. So tell me, what happened with the original deadline? Okay, well, a lot of people assume that I didn't do anything or I was lazy and I'm not had the second half done at all on the 19th when uh, the first half dropped for advantage. And this is not true. I actually had a significant amount done by then. But uh, there are several things that uh, hindered that. Uh, for one thing, I have a, a, a relatively shitty computer. I do not have a computer that is cut up for this sort of thing. So I tend to, uh, things tend to crash a lot, or uh, renders take way too long. Uh, uh, for example, uh, the first half of the animation in Blender took two days to render, uh, start to finish. But that's not all that's required. Uh, parts frequently have to be re-rendered or uh, remade because of uh, glitches or problems in the animation. So it, it took like a good week just to actually complete the full render of the first half. And so when I had a significant amount of the second half done, and I was wrapping that up, the render time started killing me and uh, hindering my progress. And so all kinds of things had to be uh, uh, chopped down and narrowed and uh, eliminated, and uh, what I ended up having done by then was not enough for the release. And so uh, I... Uh, spent the time after that reworking a whole bunch of things and uh, ensuring that uh, the second half was as good as it could possibly be. And uh, then it took a good week and a half just to like complete all of the rendering for that. Wow. And uh, so that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds yeah, really more like it was a, a hardware limitation than anything else. Pretty much. Hardware limitation. Yeah, definitely uh, Death Battle's not on the biggest budget in the world. Um, but it definitely is like a huge project for just one person to work on. And, and you know, we, we have a very small staff, certainly. And Lang is the only animator. So things do happen. But in the end, I think it turned out great. Um, and uh, on the subject of Lang, like, it's, sprite animators have been doing all sorts of stuff on Newgrounds for freaking forever. Um, but Lang himself is, is, like, I was really lucky finding him, because this guy is a true pioneer in sprite animation. Like, he's constantly developing new new ways to to animate uh, that nobody else has thought of before, developing new styles, developing new, uh, faster ways to render things out. Um, and I, I don't know how we were lucky enough to find him, but somehow we were. <laughs> Great. Now, so you've got this thing, and people are expecting it on the 21st, and then they're thinking, okay, Christmas Day, and then New Year's Day, and then finally, on uh, December 10th, it releases, and it's huge. January 10th. I'm sorry, January 10th, yeah. And um, it's it's huge, and I I mean, I remember going to ScrewTech, and the site was, like, just dying, because there were so many people coming to it, um, and it was just it was just huge. So... What was what was that period of time like for you guys? Uh, running the website, you mean? Or yeah, I mean, watch, you, I mean, like, well, and, and, watching it come in, watching the views come in was. I mean, we knew it was going to be big, because uh, it's again Goku versus Superman. Like I expected it to reach over a million relatively quickly compared compared to the other death battles, uh, but it got over a million like a week. And that kind of blew my mind. Um, and yeah, the site was <laughs> the site was running really bad from everybody coming to watch it, and so it was it was tough getting just posting stuff on the site because we do a whole lot of other things on ScrewTech.com as well. Um, but but any kind of issues we had was definitely worth it because the the episode just killed literally killed the site and. Well, now I'm saying that completely wrong. It killed. 
and it literally killed the site. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it did really well, and I'm really proud of how uh, of, of how things turned out. And how did the fans react? Um, for the most part, a lot better than I expected. Like, I was expecting a lot of people to be like, oh, Goku should have won, blah, blah, blah. Um, but... What was that, Jordan? Uh, Jordan says he was expecting a lynch mob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten... Go ahead. Uh, I've gotten death threats and stuff from previous death battles, and I was expecting just hundreds of those in my, like, inbox and stuff, um, but no, not really. Uh, most of the thing, most of the reactions were... Um, because the, the, the problem with this death battle, or the biggest problem with this death battle is the, the people who visit Screw Attack, uh, uh, gamers in general, are far more likely to be Dragon Ball fans than, than Superman fans, at least from what we've seen. Like, we have tons of Dragon Ball fans on Screw Attack, and some Superman fans, on, uh, some DC fans, but for the most part... Dragon Ball is king in terms of, you know, animated or, I guess, superheroes in a way, even though I don't really consider Goku a superhero. Um, so we knew when we posted Goku losing, most, at least 75% of the people watching would probably not really appreciate that. But the majority of the comments, comments ended up being things like, well, Goku's a way better character, but... I understand, you know, or, 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 wow, I didn't really know those kind of things about Superman. Nah, he's way more interesting than I thought. Goku's awesome, but they were right. And, um, and, and of course, a lot of people just thought the episode was a lot of fun, which is, of course, the main thing. Um, so I, I was really excited to see how much of a positive reaction we actually got. It does have more likes on YouTube than dislikes, which... What is the concern that we would probably get more dislikes originally? Um, so, I guess it's been working, and I'm glad it has. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a guy on my uh, Facebook page say that uh, Goku being defeated by Superman was the worst thing that has ever happened to him. Uh, it has shattered his view of reality, and if he couldn't find... a explanation as to why Superman won, he was going to end his life. And that's what people, like, they're that's really, really affected by. That's just a little extreme. Yeah, a little um, bit. <laughs> a little bit. That's crazy. Right. Uh, yeah, there were some really crazy, you know, responses, but for the most part, I'm like, like, there are a lot of people who, uh, viewers who look at it negatively and, like, they just look for things to pick apart, even if it really doesn't make any sense from their end to begin with. Uh, and I just kind of, like, I can't, I kind of ignore that because, like, I don't make, I obviously don't make the show for those kinds of people. Like, I, I don't want to spend the next month of my life defending, you know, the show from these people who I'm not going to be able to convince anyway. You know, I don't make it for those people. I make it for the people who just want to be entertained by this awesome fight and maybe you learn a thing or two. Mm. I think that's the best thing you can do with it. Mm. Absolutely. So, now, regarding the fight itself, um, I want to let you guys know, because we were running a little bit behind when we started, uh, it's almost 3 o'clock. If you need to go, just say so, and that's fine. Um, I got time. You got time? Okay, Jordan's got time. So, uh, yeah, I want to talk about the fight itself. Um, I mean, where do we even begin? It's like the fight that everybody's been waiting for for, you know, decades. Um, and when I first watched it, I was absolutely blown away. And I thought the, the 15 minutes or so of, you know, pre-fight character analysis was just uh, amazing, all the backgrounds and everything. Um, and the voice acting was top-notch. The, it was action-packed and everything. And... Like Ben was saying, I just I can't, I can't disagree with their logic, even if I think Goku should have won, because they just explained it so well. Um, of course, you know, as a, as a hardcore Dragon Ball fan, there are some things that seem a little strange to me. 
um, like the like the way Goku used the power pole and stuff like that. But um, oh well, things like that. You know, uh, just real quick, things like using the power pole or whatever. Um, it's the same kind of reason why we use GT. Because if we didn't include the power pole, all that would that, all that would accomplish would be leaving the question: Well, what if he did use the power pole? Would he then defeat yeah. Superman? So we have to include those kinds of things. <clears throat> Plus, Goku's never used the power pole in Super Saiyan Four. Oh. Four. So it was kind of cool to think of what would it be like if Super Saiyan Goku started swinging a massive power pole around, destroying things. Well, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to the death battle logic of using a character's entire arsenal. The fact is, is that Nimbus is used, the, you know, the Noibo, the power pole is used, and even Super Kaioken is, is used when, you know, when, when Super Saiyan Super 4 Saiyan Goku Ball. is doing the Kamehameha. So... Right, All right. of the what you know, the less obvious things in you know Goku's arsenal are being used, as is Superman's. All you know, the vast majority of all the stuff that's been used for Superman in the past comics. I mean, seriously, the amount of stuff is insurmountable for Superman. But we had the used fact the is, mother is, box that would have been over in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Superman has some crazy things that he's used before that we just didn't include because a like he doesn't technically have them anymore, or you know, things like that. Um, he have them until a later time in his life, or whatever. Yeah. I heard someone that he was a reality warper too, or something? No, Superman is just basically whatever Superman wants to be at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Superman for you. Uh, he can't make up random powers anymore. That's pre-crisis Superman, uh, who could just change the shape of his face into an alien in seconds for no reason. Um, but uh, he he patches up... Apparently, a regular job of his is to go patch up holes of reality with his static electricity from his hands. He just flies over. Oh, there's a hole in reality. It's warping space and time. <laughs> Fixed. So, that's... What he does. That makes wow. sense, yeah. <laughs> Learn something new. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I like most Dragon Ball fans. Well, I shouldn't say most, but yeah, I did not know Superman was that powerful. I mean, I knew I grew up watching Superman. I, 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 I get Superman, but I didn't know he was at that level. See, I think the problem is that, as we've been saying throughout different different eras of Superman, he has been that powerful. He has been able to juggle planets and and do all crazy kinds of things. But I think. In most cases, in, 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 say, the baseline of Superman's powers, he doesn't have all those crazy abilities. Um, you know, people, most people know Superman through, you know, the movies, uh, the TV shows, the cartoons, and uh, not necessarily all the pre-crisis comics where he was able to do so many crazy things depending on what the writers needed for that particular story. So, in general, no, Superman doesn't have all those kinds of power, you know, um, amazing abilities that... that um, you, you know, you're kind of learning about that uh, you didn't know were part of Superman's law because, in general, they're not. Uh, you know, they're you know from one particular story and one particular issue uh, where one particular writer needed that kind of uh, power to fit his story. Right, kind of kind of pre continuity in a way where yeah. one thing affects the next, where one thing affects the next issue and the next, and it didn't really that didn't really start to come into play until like. 70s, 80s, and then certainly after Crisis, but yeah. I mean, for example, and you know, most people see Superman 2 and look at the movie, and like never before has Superman thrown a big cellophane S. Uh, mm. You know, where that came from, who knows? And we'll never saw it again. Mm. All right. Thank now, God. touching on that, with the the new 52, the reboot, has Superman's powers been limited in any way? And do you think that if Goku fought against this, this current Superman, would he be able to win? Well, Superman it's, it's bench presses... <laughs> it's bench presses the freaking Earth for five days. <laughs> yeah, New 52 <laughs> hasn't been around long enough for Sorry. us to determine that. Um, New 52 Damn. continuity has been around, what, a year and three months or something like that, and uh, we're still within like a, maybe a two-month period as far as continuity is concerned. Um, and, and Grant Morrison, God knows what the hell he's doing because he's just all over the shop. Uh, so it really, I don't even think Superman knows the full extent of his powers yet because he's still very, relatively new in his career in this new continuity. As far as uh, 
New 52 was concerned for Death Battle. Basically what we decided, because there are two major eras of Superman. There's the pre-crisis and there's the modern. Um, and, and, well, there's also the golden age, but that's kind of pre-crisis, kind of, you know. Um, but we figured, okay, we're going to take all of modern Superman, but if, if something in New 52 doesn't add up with what we can find in modern Superman, then we're just not going to kind of ignore it, because... We don't really know if New 52 Superman is a new Superman or if he's the same kind of Superman as the modern. Um, so that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the the view we had on it and why we didn't use any New 52 feats specifically in the episode. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I understand. Uh, so how did you... I mean, you explained it very thoroughly at the end of the, the film, uh, the video, but people are still confused. So how did you decide who would ultimately win? Was it simply a numbers game, and that was it? And then the rest was just no. making it theatrical no. so you could no. show it to people? It was pretty clear. Like, well, okay. It, it was kind of clear that Superman would win and kind of not at the same time because both characters are just so... Anything can happen, really, with Goku and Superman. Um, and, and every time I would watch it... It was funny because every time I would watch a Superman movie or read a Superman comic or something, I'd be like, and he would do some incredible feat, and I'd be like, oh man, there's no way Goku can beat Superman. And then I would go watch something Goku, uh, Dragon Ball related, and Goku would do some incredibly incredible feat, and I'd be like, oh man, there's no way Superman can beat that. And then I'd go back to Superman and do the exact same thing. Hmm. So it was just, uh, that kind of attitude was back and forth, but in the end, whenever I just stopped, stepped back, and thought about it, it was always... Every single time Superman ever did something incredible, he did it effortlessly. And it was like he could easily do these kinds of things whenever he wanted. He just had to have sunlight. And whenever Goku did these kinds of things, it was really, really hard on him. And, like, that was clearly his limit at the time. And that was kind of the deciding factor. Yeah. Right. I have something down there. Hey, what's that, Jordan? Uh, well, for one thing, people keep looking at the numbers, which was very clear. Don't look at the numbers. All those exist for is because that's the best numbers that we could ever possibly produce. And then ignore that because the most important part is what they explain after. Uh, the difference being at the core of their character is what really counts. And in terms well, the of numbers, how limits and things they could do. The numbers right. are, are kind of tricky yeah. because, uh, like, with Superman, you can't calculate the exact numbers. That's why all of our numbers for Superman are like his strength is greater than this or whatever. And none of those things that we talked about were his max, like, limit potential kind of feats. Like, he's done, like, he flew to the sun or whatever in, like, less than two minutes. He's flown to galaxies in less than two minutes and back. So it's like, who knows how fast that is. Um, as far as Goku is concerned, the numbers were his max potential based on the whole 40 tons thing. Uh, a lot of people are just, uh, were thinking, like, we, we kind of... Um, uh, uh, undercut Goku's powers uh, didn't really give him enough. Like he's actually way more powerful than he than we considered that he was. Actually, we gave him the benefit of the doubt in every single area. Goku actually does not lift forty tons. The whole point of that of that scene is that he fails to lift forty tons miserably, mm. miserably. Like he has to be in Super Saiyan to be able to lift the forty tons. Um, granted. Goku can do things that are way more beyond 40 tons in other parts of the show. That's why we calculate the key output using that bomb. The key, key is the whole thing. Key is Goku's sunlight. Or go, key is to Goku as sunlight is to Superman. That's the explanation for why Goku's so, like, <laughs> it, it, it's so random what Goku can do at times. Same for Superman. Um... And then for the bomb that we used to calculate Goku's key, uh, we said that the bomb was um, uh, based on Goku in right after the ten times gravity training with King Kai when he was fighting Vegeta. Actually, technically that is true, but Jiro specifically says that he calculated what Goku would become later on. He did not calculate the 100 times training, of course, or the Super Saiyan. He didn't know about all that. But the bomb should technically be more powerful than we gave it credit for. So we did that for everything and uh, for every part of Goku. And I feel comfortable doing that because Goku's all about breaking his limits. And I, I can imagine 
if the show says Dr Goku can do this thing, it's very likely he can go beyond it. But he still has a limit that he has to break, and he can't... That's the whole point of Goku, is every single challenge that he comes across, he has to break a limit in order to achieve it. Mm. But there's still going to be limits, regardless. Right. Hey, see, that brings up a good point, uh, because uh, what the numbers are is just what you can observe throughout the series. I mean, they could be capable of way more than all we know. All we, all we have to base the numbers on is what is observable in the series, what they actually accomplish. For example, uh, when it's brought up that Superman can lift 200 quintillion tons, uh, the guy says, and that's still not your upper limit. Mm -hmm. So God knows how much more he could actually lift. Right. Uh, also, I heard some Dragon Ball fans say that the 40 tons didn't take into account that he was on the Kai's planet, and which has 10 times the gravity, so it should have actually been Why 400 tons. And then, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, well, if it is 400 tons, then let's put that back into the equation and you add another zero. Um, but it doesn't change the outcome of the fight at all. It, it wouldn't it change the sense. outcome. Also, the whole idea of it being 40, 400 tons is ridiculous because why would you call it 40 tons if it was actually 400 tons? You measure weight based on the gravity that you're in. You don't measure mm -hmm. it by some other random planet. I don't measure my weight based on moon gravity. <laughs> you know, like, and if I do, then I would say I weigh so and so on the moon. But I'm clearly right. not on the moon. So I weigh this. You know, like, it doesn't make any sense why they would use Earth statistics there. Especially since it's the Kais who are saying it's 40 tons. And right. yeah. they don't ever say what the gravity is on Grand Kai's planet. Because it's not King Kai's planet, it's Grand Kai's planet. For all we right. know, it could be less. It could be mm. less than Earth's gravity. I don't know, probably not, but we don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, people can't really disagree with... I mean, I don't disagree with the logic and, and the way that you used it. Um, and the amount of research that you put into the fight was just incredible. Just to watch every episode of the Dragon Ball series, it, in, its, in itself speaks volumes about your dedication to portraying the fight accurately. So um, I think most people just didn't realize Superman was so ridiculously overpowered and had no limits to begin with. It's just like, yeah, how can you, how can you compete with that, you know? And the thing, the well, thing with Superman, uh, sorry, I was going to say the thing yeah, with yeah. Superman also is that uh, he never seemed like he's always holding back. In every fight, he's always been holding back because he doesn't want to, you know, hurt the person. He, his whole thing is not to actually, you know, kill people or whatever. It's about you know doing what you know using necessary force to have a you know find a solution to something. I think the only time he's ever gone all out is against Doomsday and. And when Doomsday died, he came back to life eventually. Superman didn't necessarily die. He was kind of in some weird Kryptonian, you know, uh, half-life. I don't know what you want to call it, but one beat every 30 days or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the thing with Superman is he doesn't really belong in something like this because he's not about fighting people. Like, combat, fighting people is a big part of the Superman story, but the fight in a Superman story, in a good Superman story, is never about whether or not he can beat the person. Because it's clear he can always beat the person. The fight always has some, he always has some ulterior motive. Ulterior motive. Like, there's always something else going on. And that's what the, the story is ultimately about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Superman stories I find uh, the the most interesting ones to me. The best ones are the ones that really get to the heart of who he is as a character. I mean, it's not it's it's never really so much. I mean, yeah, there are some cool fights here and there, but but yeah, like you say, the the fight is either just a metaphor for something else, or or an internal struggle, or something that that he may be going through, or him having to determine whether he's uh, kind of becoming more. If he's overstepping his boundaries as Earth's protector and kind of taking it a little too far, or or is he not? And and uh, yeah, I mean, and that and that's I, mean, I don't know. To me, though, that that's that's much more interesting than just a plain old rock 'em sock 'em fight. It's certainly, with a character like Superman, who is pretty much you know, it's you're you're right to an extent. It's a foregone conclusion that he most likely will win in the end. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, 
but yeah, but those are, yeah, to me, I mean, those types of stories are most interesting anyway. Well, a perfect example of that is that recent uh, animated movie, Superman vs. the Elite, based on the, uh, the story, What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, is where you get these villains who will go to any length to solve a situation and will kill people, and, and then people saying, well, Superman's outdated because his ethical and moral values, you know, aren't putting people away for good the way they should be, and Superman shows them why he does what he does, and it's an excellent movie if you, if you really want to go out there and see what makes Superman Superman for Superman fans, then Superman vs. the Elite is a perfect example of why we love Superman. Absolutely. That, I, would all, I would throw All-Star Superman in there as well. If I, I, sure. That's good, yeah. Those two movies are, are were kind of the tipping point for me for kind of realizing just what Superman is all about because those two movies were great. Uh, Superman versus the, the ending scene of Superman versus the Elite, um, where he shows what he could be if he decided to be like what the Elite wants him to be. God, uh, that was one of the uh, the best parts of uh, or one of my favorite parts of actually researching for for this episode uh, easily and. Probably the best movie of of the group of the of all the movies that I watched, Dra Dragon Ball and Superman uh, movies combined, was probably that one. Uh, even better than even though Christopher Reeve is awesome, and some of the Dragon Ball movies are just beyond awesome and, and amazing mm -hmm. in how they were you know animated and uh, even though com they're completely different style movies, um, I think uh, Elite was the one that had the most impact um, on uh, on me and the research in general. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, now the conclusion of the fight isn't exactly beneficial for either of the fighters since the whole planet explodes and Lois Lane you know, probably dies along with it um, so, I, can, uh, I can explain that well, hold on a second Ben, if there were an epilogue to show what happened after the fight what would it be? Chi Chi floating in space swearing revenge um, because Goku inadvertently saved her by flinging her to some other distant planet or something like that. I, I don't know. Um, um, like, I never really thought of what would happen afterwards, because the point is just that Superman would win, but in doing so, uh, like, you have the infinite mass punch and the dragon fist, their two best attacks colliding. Like, who knows what kind of Havoc and destruction, something, you know, Goku and Superman together can create. Um, so something massive had to happen, and, and there was just really no way around that. Uh, as far as an mm -hmm. epilogue story, uh, there was some Juwan who actually wrote on an idea of Superman goes to Namek and gets the Dragon Balls and wishes everybody back, and then him and Goku become best friends. Oh. Which would oh. probably happen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Which, which uh, Goku and Superman would be best friends, um, but Goku isn't honestly the best at remembering to hang out with his friends, so they probably wouldn't really hang out until the next big crisis. Well, he's kind of oh, well. got me there. <laughs> Unless Goku joined the Justice League, which would be awesome. Ooh. That would be... I would watch that fight. <laughs> By far, that would be the greatest thing ever. That would be a great crossover, yeah. I'd watch that too. So, now that all's said and done, and the hard, hard work is over... You know, the victory's been announced. What's next? I mean, you would think Goku vs. Superman is the end-all fight, so where does Death Battle go from here? Uh, Death Battle's still going. Death Battle's still going. We have, um, uh, we have a lot. <laughs> we, we have a whole list of planned episodes, and uh, we are actually looking to kind of expand the team a bit. Um, try to get, because, like, as you saw with the delay in this episode, the, uh, the way Death Battle is currently run, uh, with only three people, like it's kind of tough to keep on a regular schedule. Uh, so we need to, we, we are looking at kind of changing the way Death Battle is, is built out and made uh, so that we can get more Death Battles out more often. Um, but we do have some, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I should announce it here or not. Well, okay. I'm going to go ahead and say, because we're live right now, right? Yeah. yeah. And people will know what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it, what the next one is, uh, or, or, or what one of the next ones is. We're, we don't have a specific schedule just yet. Um, but I wouldn't exactly say that it's coming soon. 
because it's going to take a little bit for this one. This one has a lot of research to do, too. We want to do um, He-Man versus Lion-O. Huh. Uh, which which uh, is going to basically be like a Superman-style character versus a Superman-style character, because they can do basically whatever the crap they want to do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's what we're looking into right now. Um, but we have a whole lot of other episodes planned, and um, Goku versus Superman is definitely not the last, and hopefully not the best. Mm. Mm. We... Do you continue to do them in 3D from now on? Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for the most part, we'll stick with the sprite animations, because that's what Death Battle is known for, and it works really well for Death Battle. Um, but every so often, depending on what we want to do, uh, we can change the animation style around. There was talk of, there is no, uh, this is just talk, there was talk of maybe bringing like somebody like Little Mac from uh, mm -hmm. Punch-Out! into Death Battle, and if we were going to do that, like there would have to be some different animation changes to, to maybe do some first-person boxing, things like that. Uh, again, it's not, we don't know whether or not we're doing that or not. Uh, but, you know, the animation really depends on, the animation style really depends on what would be best for the characters in the franchise at hand. Um, but right. for the most part, we'll stick with sprites. Okay. okay. Well, Jordan says he can do anything, doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> so, um, I would like to... I'd like to uh, wrap things up. You guys have been great. I just have a couple more questions. Um, I, this is something I ask in all of my interviews on the Dow of Dragon Ball site. I ask what does Dragon Ball mean to you? And it gets people thinking, you know, introspective, and you just come up with some kind of deep response. So I want to ask, what does the Goku vs. Superman death battle mean for you? And each of you can take a turn to respond. And let's, let's, um, let's start with Lawrence. Well, Dragon Ball to me is probably one of the gateway anime into you know, mainstream. When it came to the UK, it was the year 2000, and it was on Cartoon Network. So it was like the big. It was one of the first like anime that was seen properly on TV, and it consistently stayed like that. And I just grew a real affinity for it. And eventually, I found out about the movies because. Yeah, I for the longest time I thought these movies were impossible to find, but then I have to remember this is the internet, and once I got like you know more like than dial-up speeds, I was able to really get a good idea about Dragon Ball and just yeah follow it. It would just always be in the back of my mind for years and years and years, playing the games and just watching the episodes, watching the movies, and eventually when Team Four Star came about, it was just um it just intensified and it meant that Dragon Ball as a whole would be part of my conscience for the rest of my life really because again as I mentioned having you know voiced Goku for this it just I really felt like a connection with the character so mm. really it's part of my my personality really it's just it means a lot to me Dragon Ball is pretty much one of the most you know, things that have made the most impact on my life. One of. There are many things, but that is certainly one of them. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, now, Mike, can, what does the Goku vs. Superman death battle mean for you? Um, well, let's see. It was, uh, as I said before, it was, it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful experience. I it was it was truly an honor I'll say once again just to be asked to provide the voice of Superman uh, to kind of represent him in this way um, it was it, it was amazing and um, uh, yeah I um, uh, Superman has always meant a lot to me I mean I love all of the the Marvel and DC stable of characters but uh, you know, Superman, he, he was one of the first heroes I was ever exposed to as a kid. And uh, um, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, I he's certainly something that's meant to aspire to. And uh, and that, in a way, has kind of kept me honest and uh, try, uh, at least helped me attempt to do, to do that. And 
and you know just uh, trying to be to be a better person in general. Uh, I guess not to get too uh, deep or personal in this whole thing, but uh, and that's kind of what I tried to bring to uh, to that 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 aspect uh, to the fight uh, to this um, to this portrayal, uh, and uh, I hope that 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 was successful. And uh, yeah, and just to kind of learning about the responsibility, the kind of the feeling of responsibility that it is, and just not like, hey, cool, I get to play Superman, of being like, well, I have Superman correctly, hopefully, and the way that uh, everyone can feel like you, you can hear it and think uh, it's a little daunting, but it's um, but uh, thrilling and humbling at the same time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, a wonderful experience. Great, thank you, uh, Kimlin. What does the Goku vs Superman death battle mean for you? Let's see. I do know that growing up, I always considered, um, in a weird way, um, DBZ in general, especially with Goku, being um, kind of like a metaphor about there's always something bigger and better out there. And oftentimes you don't really see it coming until it comes. So, you know, once you think about it, it's kind of like just what um, what Ben mentioned about. Oh, we're hope we're hoping. Well, this is a big, huge fight. This is Goku versus Superman death battle. But there might be better, be bigger, better ones in the future. Maybe mm -hmm. even hoping for it. And um, what I like about the whole. Um, the crossover aspect, as I mentioned before, about learning more about the mythos about both characters. I know that throughout human history, we've always had lots of mythical, folkloric characters to, in a way, help us um, relate to them and, you know, go on through our lives, internalize some of their stories. And it, it was, I really like the how the conflict was ended after the conflict, you mentioned about what those characters mean to um, all of, to the audience, all of us. And, um, yeah, it's the whole, to, to me, Superman and Goku pretty much represent our, our new mythology, so to speak, our new folk heroes, besides just, um, besides just something to go fan over. <laughs> right. Well, that was great. Yeah, I think it's a lot more than just entertainment. I mean, the fans out there take it very seriously. Um, some people just just to have fun, but other people, it's like a part of their lives. And as um, Lawrence and Mike have said, they grew up with these characters, and now to see the character that they resonate with fighting against the other character that somebody else resonates with, it's like watching a part of themselves do battle in, in a way. That's how, that's how I felt. Um, when Goku lost, I was... it hurt. <laughs> You know, I'm like, no, you know, he's no, that can't happen. But uh, you know, I get it, and I, I go through the stages of, of grief and acceptance. Like, you know, it's just a show, but uh, still, you root for your guy. He's he's your he's your man, and um, he represents something bigger than just this animated character that, that you know um, that you grew up with. It's, it's something in your mind. It's a part of who you are. That, um, I think I think you're 100 percent right. Uh, so Steve, what does the Goku vs Superman death battle mean for you? Well, for me, it was uh, it was interesting because we've always Superman's always been a character that other characters have wanted to pit themselves against to see. You know, I mean, there's been so many of these types of arguments over the internet over the years, and most of them are just popularity contests. So who can get the most votes for their character, and that will determine who wins. Where with this death battle, and I think where the, you guys excelled is that it's based on research, it's based on you know numbers, it's based on science, it's based on maths for these two character universes, and a lot of research has gone into it to determine who would win in a you know a battle between them. And I think that's where it's excelled because it's not about who has more fans or who's more popular, but you know looking at the characters themselves. Whether or not these two characters would actually fight in the first place is, uh, is you know. Oh, Steve, I think I think we just lost your audio. <clears throat> Sorry, I must have just accidentally touched the uh, 
the space oh, bar. Might be that was the worst thing. Oh, no. No. Now <laughs> the mystery will remain so. What part did you. Where, where did I go and blank? Oh, just about 10 seconds ago. Okay. For me, yeah, this, this battle, you know, um, it, it's a long debated argument over the internet, and to see. Uh, a final resolution um, is, is great based on research, as I was saying, and that's fantastic. Um, you know, whether these two characters would fight in the first place is debatable, but uh, it's, 10, it's it's just it's fantastic that uh, you know so much research has gone into it. For me, you know, Superman is obviously a part of my life, a huge part of my life, and while I have no real, never knew anything about Dragon Ball Z, about Goku. Um, it was, you know, I never had the the knowledge to be able to answer people's questions on who would win a fight between these two characters. And now I don't have to because you guys have done that for us, and uh, we can just send them the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, well, okay. Yeah, like, I guess I'll, I'll speak. Uh, actually, no. Let's go to Jordan. Jordan, can you tell us uh, what does the Goku vs Superman death battle mean for you? Oh. Uh, I've always been attracted to the idea of a fight between two ridiculously overpowered characters. Uh, I mean, uh, when it comes to overpowered characters, I always hear, well, that's boring. Well, of course it is. If you put them in ordinary circumstances and give them ordinary challenges, what if you put them in overpowered circumstances or against overpowered challenges? Then it would be very interesting. So uh, this being the first and major... Uh, chance for me to uh, create something like that. Two overpowered characters fighting each other. Uh, I have a blast. I've always wanted to do something like this, and I, I think I came out quite well. And uh, with that, um, I was really kind of on the flip side of this whole thing, uh, because you gotta see, like, Ben and Chad and everyone were all researching the characters, uh, in terms of their numbers and feats and strengths and how they compare against each other and how that would fare in battle, whereas I was studying the aesthetic side of the character. Mm. What are they like? How do they behave? How do they talk? Uh, Superman is very austere. Goku is, uh, uh, has that uh, pure-hearted kind of uh, personality. What do their attacks look like often? You know, the aesthetics behind the special effects that go into their attacks. How do they move their poses? Those are the things that I studied, mm. and uh, I, uh, even though I could not do everything I wanted to do for the animation, I mean, uh, I could have made it better uh, if I had more time or better hardware, but uh, I, I prioritized the things that would be the most critical for the animation, uh, their poses, uh, and uh, how they behave, like uh, how they, uh, you know, respond, how they you know, move in certain situations and whatnot, and uh, I uh, gathered a whole bunch of reference material, uh, uh, put together images and clips and all kinds of things, and just studied them very thoroughly for weeks. And uh, this was uh, before I even started the animation, you know, before uh, the whole thing really even started, and uh, got to uh, really know the characters on their art side. And, uh, and uh, that made it the most... Uh, uh, big, fantastic, comprehensive animation project I've ever done. Mm. And so, yes, it, uh, it does mean a lot to me. And uh, also, with the whole debate of Goku vs. Superman, um, uh, people would get very sensitive about the topic because, yes, people take the thing very seriously. Very big fictional characters, decades of history and things to think about. And uh, But the reason... This one hit so hard for the Goku fans, seeing the Goku lost, is because just how complete this analysis was. There has never been and never will be an analysis this thorough and expensive as this one in the death battle, which means that Goku fans no longer have a leg in the argument. They cannot produce an argument nearly as precise and uh, perfect as this argument. And so, I mean... The greatest sources for both of these franchises in the world were brought into this battle, you know, uh, for, for the research, uh, which means that no one will ever be able to compete with that analysis. Hmm. So it's really justified, in a sense, why the Goku fans are, uh, you know, so uh, affected deeply by this analysis, whether that's realized or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 
I just consider that really amazing to think about. Hmm. Like, obviously the creators of the franchises wouldn't care or be able to, you know, uh, produce any real argument for the characters because they're the creators, which means that it would be impossible to use them for the analysis. So we got the best possible sources in the world. How do you compete with that? No one can. <laughs> never has and never will. It's the ultimate perfect argument. It cannot be taught. Well, I, I, thank you. Great comments. I think there will be people who will still try to nitpick it. You know, like I've heard people say, well, what, what about when Goku hits him in the head with the power pole? If Superman's weak against magic, shouldn't that have just knocked his brains out and that would have been the end of the fight? You know? Ah, the animation is not what actually counts. That's for entertainment, and Dennis made that clear many times. Mm -hmm. The animation is just for entertainment purposes, and it's a representation of the research. That's not, we're not saying that's how it would go down. It's just because. We can't do this thing and not have a kick-ass fight to go along with us. Right. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Jordan. That was great. Now, I'm just going to say very quickly, it was an honor to be asked to be a part of it. Um, I've been following Dragon Ball for uh, since 1998. You know, made it a part of my life. I studied Chinese martial arts and meditation. I went to China, trained with the Shaolin monks and a Tai Chi master. Oh, all because of... All because of Dragon Ball Z, you know? It, it completely changed my life, and Goku was a role model. Uh, I would train for five hours a day in the martial arts, just like Goku would. Uh, you know, he would train even longer, but you know, that was the, the inspiration. And so it really greatly affected my life in a very positive way. And um, I've been writing this, this blog, The Dao of Dragon Ball, since 2007. And this was the first like big project where somebody asked me to be a part of it as as a, you know, like a consultant, and um, that that meant a lot. So um, thank you, Ben, for asking me. It was like I said, it was a real honor. And um, in my heart, I still think Goku should have won, uh, but I can't disagree with your numbers and your logic. So uh, overall, I was really amazed by the fight, and uh, it it just means a lot to me. So thank you very much. And then Ben, I'll give you the final word. Well, and it makes sense that you know people who grew up with Goku uh, would want would, would still imagine that Goku would win, because like Goku and Superman, they're not ordinary characters. They're not designed for just a story. They're designed to be idols, and that's what Goku and Superman are all about. Goku is designed to be an idol who never gives up. Superman is designed to be an idol who you are supposed to aspire to be like. Um, and so when that idol dies, like it's it's. It's hard to see Goku lose because that's, in a way, that is kind of your ideas of, uh, of what a person should be like losing to another kind of person, uh, which, of course, is not what Death Battle is about, but at the same time, we do want to, like, while Death Battle is about, um, you know, finding out who wins and who loses, uh, we do, I, I, I do like the idea that it can show people what a character is like and, and how uh, Kim Lin and Steve were talking about uh, how they didn't know much about you know Superman or, or um, Dragon Ball respectfully uh, and, and I like the idea that Dragon Ball can or, or that the death battle um, can uh, can kind of share new information with that, that people can learn things from it um, and that is something that I you know aspire to do with death battle what death bat what this death battle means for me um well first it finally means that i won't be getting bombarded with goku versus superman requests <laughs> uh, finally <laughs> which is great <laughs> um but both characters do mean a lot i mean the to goku is like i said they're both idols and they're both characters that you you you, you can look at and you want to be like um and so it's hard to pit them against each other and, and, and write that kind of thing. When it's it's like pitting two, I don't know. It's it, this is kind of extreme, but it's like pitting two kind of almost religions against each other, uh, in a sense. Like you know, people will have their own sides, but in the end, everybody has their own beliefs about that specific thing. That that really has nothing to do with specific feats or specific. You know, measurements or things like that. It's just how the character relates to them, and, and that was the hardest thing about this death battle. Um, but now that Goku versus Superman is over, death battle can continue, 
and hopefully branch out into completely new areas. Because now we're n we're no longer building up to this Goku versus Superman apex that everybody was you know looking for. Uh, now it's who knows what the next biggest you know request will be, and um, that's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to seeing wh where we go from here. And um, it has been an honor and a pleasure working with each and every one of you, uh, Derek and Steve. Absolutely a tremendous help in uh, the research, the analysis. Uh, of Goku and Superman, as well as uh, Kaizenshi.com and Superman Super Site, uh, uh, who could not unfortunately make it to the Hangout today. Um, Kimlin, Lawrence, and Mike, I, I don't know how we could have possibly had the characters be themselves without you. Uh, hmm. It just would not have worked, and everybody would have been like, why, that's not Goku, that's, that can't be Goku, that's not Superman. So uh, I honestly cannot have seen, uh, and, and of course Lang, uh, <laughs> for putting together a 10 minute long animation all by himself uh, that is 3D and looks freaking badass. It's really awesome. Uh, I cannot have seen this episode going any other way and not succeeding. <laughs> or and succeeding. Did I say that right? You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, this was a lot of fun, and I'm glad that we were finally able to get it together, you know? Yeah. Uh, it took a lot of schedule arrangements, but but we did it. Um, oh, I just lost Jordan. All right. So, um, no, no, yeah, Jordan. thank you. Bye. I know we could keep talking about this for hours and hours, um, but are there any final thoughts or comments? Um, I, I just thought of something that I was wanted to mention a bit about in asking about final thoughts about what Superman and Goku versus Superman means. And one of the things about Superman. Uh, when I was a kid, Superman, um, he, I, I was, I was enamored with Superman because of what he could do. All of his powers, heat vision, super strength. Wow! I wish I could do all that. So when I was a kid, I liked, I was, I really liked him because I loved what he could do. When I became an adult, I looked back and I found that I liked him because of who he was as a person. And that is a big part because of the fact that he, yes, he can do all these things, but he chooses, look at what he chooses to do with them. This is a guy who could take over the world if he wanted to, but he doesn't. This is a guy who chooses to live humbly and help people who can be helped by him with these powers. And that, to me, is really, and that really resonated with me. It was like a big wow kind of, a, I don't know, it just... Uh, Kind of warms your heart, kind of thing, and uh, and then that to me is interesting. The idea of this guy who has all of these powers and chooses to help people, and having to, and yes, he can seem a bit overpowered at times, and in the terms of fights, that can seem to make it a little less exciting uh, for some people. But to me, the idea that he can he can do all this stuff and what he chooses to do with it. And the problems that he runs into um, as a result of trying to figure out what is the right thing to do, being able to do all these things, that's interesting to me. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and that's, uh, like, like Ben was saying, that, that's something that, that resonates with me. And uh, one of the things that, uh, they teach, that I was taught in, like, when I was in, in school for like voice classes was that uh, you are your voice in a way. You know, when you're developing your voice, you're developing your way of communicating, and that is, it, it, so it is you. It's, what, it's the you that you're putting out there. And uh, so you are your voice. So when you're doing this other voice, when I was doing Superman's voice, it was very important to me to, to be Superman's voice and try to, to live up to all of that. And uh, that, was, uh, that was important. It was a great honor. And uh, yeah, I... Um, Superman means a lot to me, for sure. Well said. Speaking, speaking mm -hmm. of voice, uh, Mike, you do voice, uh, voice acting lessons, right? I do. That is correct. Uh, yeah. If anyone's interested, shoot me an email at it's just some random story gmail dot com. Random plug. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to get the plug out there because. Oh well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I, just, I just want to say, Michael, that was very well said. And you know, people often ask yeah, me, yeah. why Superman? What, why why, do you, why have you chosen Superman? And 
And for me, it's a very similar thing in that you know, there's all these heroes, but for Superman, it comes down to this. He does the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. Right. It's not because he's got any you know, revenge in mind. You know, he didn't, his parents weren't killed. You know, he's, he doesn't feel guilty because he let his uncle die. It's none of those things. It's because he was brought up to use his powers to help people and do the right thing. And to me, that's, just, you know, that's the kind of um, the, the ethics and the morals that my parents tried to inst instill in me. And that's why I think Superman uh, resonates with me. And, and you know, he, I aspire to be uh, like that character. And, um, and I, I just wanted to, again, compliment you for the, the job you did and, f and for the, the words you've just said. Well, thank you very much. No, I mean, I, no, yeah, I mean, Superman is like, there was a line from, I think it was Kingdom Come that said Superman, one of the, of all of the, of all of the powers that he had, his biggest, strong, biggest ability that he had, his greatest one, was his ability to know right from wrong, and then, and then choose to find the right thing to do, and then do it no matter what the cost. And that's, uh, and that, and I would, and I would agree with that. That's that's. That's uh, that's who he is. It's a big part of. That's that's what he's about. And uh, the idea being that even if he didn't have these powers, he would still be trying to find a way to help people, um, and uh, put himself at risk regardless. And that that's uh, that uh, that's that's important. That uh, that means something. And sadly, in, in this in today's world, that's not necessarily uh, something that a lot of people. Um, agree with or think that is cool. You know, we're all got these dark uh, heroes, and I think, and I'm hoping that in June this year, uh, everyone <laughs> will see, uh, see something different. Yeah. Hopefully so. Right. Well, the cool thing I like about Goku is that he's persistent. He keeps moving forward, no matter how hard he gets hit. He knows there's a higher level to reach, and he's going to reach it because he's always trying to defeat his current self. No matter what level he's at, he knows that he can go higher. You know, there's a, there's a saying in Chinese culture, there's always a bigger mountain. It doesn't matter how big you are, there's always a bigger one, and that's what Goku is always trying to do. So, you can kill him, he's going to come back. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He'll come, he'll come back stronger, stronger than ever. ever. <laughs> yeah, stronger than ever, and he'll beat you next time. So, in my mind, that's right now and Goku will win the next fight. Hmm. Is that what you were looking for when you asked about a follow up? <laughs> like <laughs> like a round two. Like, like Goku's, round, yeah. Goku's boot versus Superman. <laughs> he teleports <laughs> in from the afterlife and is like <laughs> It's time for round two, let's do this. <laughs> I can only hope, you know. I think there are a lot of Dragon Ball fans that, that uh, still believe in that that ideal as well. That Goku he can pull it off. He just you gotta give him the time to do it. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I know, like I said, we could talk about this for hours more. Um, I really appreciate you all coming to, together and doing this. It was a lot of fun. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you thank very you. much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for putting this together, Derek. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, bye. Yep. Nice yeah. meeting you all. Thanks. Nice to meet everyone.